Now then, people, again, sorry, it's been a while. I keep saying that, but anyway, uh, let's get on with this video. So I bought this beast, my uh, new Lapierre EZSD, mullet setup, 29 front wheel, uh, 27 half at the back. So yeah, bit of a review as I've ridden it quite a few times now. Um, it's brilliant. It's not really an e-bike, it's classed as a hybrid. Reason being is because most e-bikes, the motor is built into the bike. Whereas with this, the motor and the battery are one component. You basically, I've lined up here, undo it, pull that clip down, and you can pull it out as one piece, put a blanking plate in there, and you can just run it then as a 16 kilo mountain bike. With the battery and the motor in, it weighs 20k. Uh, it's a 250 watt hour battery, which is quite small. But then again, if you run it on like a low power mode, you do get about 30 miles out of it. I've used this bike at Twisted Oaks. Um, on low power all day and when I was done I still had um, I think nearly two out of the five bars of battery left so the battery life isn't an issue it's all carbon frame as you can hear all carbon um, I like the way the rear shock sits it's sort of hidden within the frame there it's really nice the brakes are Shimano XT big old beefy discs as you can see they are beastie one thing I will say though is they take a lot longer to bed in than tram brakes. But once they do, they're a lot more bitey. They're harder to modulate, but they are a lot sort of stronger than tram. Um, I had tram on my last two bikes. Uh, so these are going to take a bit of getting used to, but they are overall stronger, better brakes. All Shimano gearing. Uh, I believe the levers are paired up. Also the XT levers. Let me show you there. Here's the controller. Nice and easy. You got one button in the middle. Actually, I don't know if I've got. I don't know if this is charged up. Oh, yeah, we've got some charge. One button in the middle to turn it off and on. And it's simple. Put it down there. It looks blue on there, but it's actually there. White lights. That's like your walk mode. Then you've got green, which is like your low power. Blue, which is middle, and then red, which is top. On this, it's called Rocket. Most uh, bikes, it's called Boost. Comes with eight hundred wide bars, which I've left wide because. I'm tall, I'm like six foot four, so I like really wide bars. Just change the grips again to death grips. Run them on pretty much all my bikes. Uh, obviously a dropper post at this price range, you're gonna have a dropper. Really is nice and smooth. Let's just bang that up. I think it's 170 mil on this, because this is an XL bike. Uh, it comes with, I think these are high roller twos. Let me see, I can't remember. Yep, high roller twos front and back. At first I thought, I've always run Maxxis Minions, I might change them, but I've actually got used to these and they're quite quite cool tyres. They slide a bit more in the corners, um, but if you sort of let them do it, then they, they find grip again. So it makes the bike feel a bit more lively. It's easier to get the back loose. It's, it's quite cool. It's quite a, nice, quite a nice feeling when you get used to it. I know that sounds weird. Um, stem is just standard Lapierre stem. At first I thought about changing it, but it's actually quite a short stem. It's actually quite aggressive looking. I like it. Um, what to say? Fox 38 forks. The, for, the forks and the shock are slightly more difficult to set up than what they are on um, with Shimano. It's because I, I did find myself riding this two or three times just to get the forks set up how, how I wanted them. It took a little while. Ended up putting an extra volume spacer in the front um, and the forty and the thirty eights. They're running pretty nice now. I've not yet blown through all the travel. I've used about ninety percent. I don't actually like to ever blow through the travel and not nearly bottom out. I run my suspension quite hard, um, but then that's your own preference. So I can't really say to you the suspension's like this. It should be like this. Everyone, everyone likes it sort of different. Um, and also I was finding when I first rode the bike, the rebound on the rear was um, slightly wrong. It was, it was kind of booking me slightly. It was like flicking up too quick. So by slowing that down a little bit, um, I actually found the the rear was tracking the floor better and I wasn't getting booked as much. Um, and once I got that set up right, my God, this bike is plush on like chattery stuff. It it sort of sails over chattery ground and over like rock gardens really well. It's quite good on routes. Um, yeah, I quite, and I've got it set up in a way it's, 
it's quite fast rolling. I'm not one of these people that runs low tire pressures. Um, I've, I literally run 30 in the front, 28 in the rear, because I'm quite heavy. I'm like 200. I think I'm like 210 pounds. Some people run like 25, 23, and there's some people that run really low pressures, like 2018. But that's ridiculous because it just doesn't work for me. Um, yeah, the cost of the bike was what did I pay for it? Five about five and a half grand. Um, and again, didn't come with pedals. But why do bikes not come with pedals? It's mental. You spend all this money on a fucking bike, and then it's like, no, we're not going to give you any pedals. So I went out and bought some um, DMR composites. Now, if I'm honest, if you want composite pedals, don't buy them ones. Buy the Nuke Proof ones. They're grippier than those for some reason. They look similar, but the Nuke Proof ones are better. So don't buy those pedals. Don't buy the DMR ones. What don't I like about this bike? Um, it quacks. You don't think, what the hell does that mean? Um... I don't know if it's the flex in the carbon, but sometimes if you when I pop off a jump, it go it makes like a sound. I've checked all the bolts over, nothing's loose. There's no cracks. It rides fine, but sometimes it just makes a weird creak. But it's quite funny. So with the bike being green and orange, and sometimes making that weird sound, me and my mate decided just to call it the mallard. It rides fine. I don't know what it is. I'm not one of these really anal people that's bothered about stuff like that. I can't really give a shit. Um, what don't I like about it? Uh, I don't know. Is, is there an issue with it? No, not really. Oh, I forgot to charge it once. I got so used to having a Trek Remedy, you just take it out. And then I was like, oh, crap. And then ended up biking it just as a 20 kilo bike um, with no battery. But that was my own doing because I'm an idiot. Uh if you've got any questions about this bike, just drop it below. I'll just do some close-ups. Here's all the gearing. Let's see if I can get it to focus a bit better on there. All Shimano Dior stuff. It's uh, all XT on the rear. As you can see, it's not all that interesting. The battery integration is really tidy. And what's also cool about this frame is some e-bikes, the down tubes on them are huge. They are massive, especially on the Giants or like something like a Nuke-proof Megawatt. The down tubes are huge and they look ridiculous. I've taken this to um, bike parks in various places and it kind of blends in really well, even though it's an e-bike. It's, it's hard to notice. Another cool little touch is all these graphics, like the orange, the black, whatever, they're all raised off the frame. They're not sprayed. They're... It's like they're sprayed on, but they're like knurled. They feel really nice. There's like a texture to them. And the actual frame itself has like a waxy texture. Feels quite cool. It's all finished off really well. This is the AM 9.2. So it's one of the high models. It's, as I said, it's a 2022 XL. Comes in about 20 kilos. Um, mullet setup. Well, I've not really done a lot to it. Just put a Enduro guard on the front. I do that on all my bikes, standard. Uh, yeah, if you want to know anything, else, so drop it in the comments. So far, what would I rate this bike out of 10? I'm not gonna lie, there are better bikes out there, so it can't be a 10 because there's always there's always some kind of improvement. So it's gonna to have to be a solid nine. Um, yeah, it's brilliant. It's handled everything great so far, and it feels, due to the added weight, very stable. When you push this bike hard into a corner, it's like you're rewarded on the way out. Um, and I think that is down to the weight also. I'm not particularly good at jumping, I'm not going to lie. But when this is off off the um, ground, because of that low down centre of gravity, that, that mass being down low, largely this area, it seems to level you out more in the air. It's uh, Yeah, it's very stable. I like it. So, yeah, I've... Uh, that's a quick look at my Lapier Ease ST. I'll do some more video reviews soon. Also, I've got another toy which is not bike related. I bought a uh, car not so long ago, a little EP3 Civic Type R. So if you want to see videos on that, just let me know and I'll do some hooning around in that and show you what I'm going to do to that. And yeah, reviews of helmets and stuff coming up. I also do DJing, so if you're interested in that, let me know. 
any bite content, whatever. Cheers for watching.